So the kind of crew that you're looking for, you need someone to do sound. Sound is really important. Uh, the technical term for that is a sound mixer. You're gonna need somebody who does lighting. So you wanna make sure the lighting on you looks nice. You wanna look good on, on film. You wanna look pretty and handsome and all that stuff. Um, and that, the technical term for that is gaffer. So you have the sound mixer, you have a gaffer, and then you want the director of photography. So they're in charge of the camera. All of these people work together, and this is sort of the bare bones kind of crew that you're looking for. You can always get more people. Having more people obviously always makes it easier because there's so many different parts of putting a film together and filming. If you're low budget and you just need to get something done, remember you're only doing 30 seconds. After you've filmed your reel, you're then going to want to take it to an editor. So the technical term for editor is editor. We call it an editor. It's just an wow. editor. Wow. I know. An editor is called an <laughs> editor. <Pretty> amazing. <laughs> so the editor is the last process and they're going to be putting everything together. If you're not in LA, um, you can show them like the kind of style of the reel that you're looking for. Any good editor can do it, no problem at all. I think we should also talk about how do you find a crew if you don't want to go to a film school or if you don't have a film school nearby. I think a good way to do it then would really be Craigslist. I have found great yeah. people in the business on Craigslist. It's good to know the technical names. I would just say sound guy or sound person, but knowing the technical names will get you what you need for your crew. So you've found your crew, you've assembled the people that you wanna work with, now you need to pick out your material. Material is really important for the reel because it's showing off who you are and what you are and what you can do. And it's also strategic in that it's placing you right away into what you can be cast in immediately. So that means that if someone were to give you a script and they said to you, tomorrow I need you to show up and film this at five in the morning, you would say to the script, oh, fantastic, I can play this in my sleep. That's the kind of material that you wanna be thinking about that you want on your reel. So there's different genres. If, for example, people, you do drama very well or you're more prone to comedy, you can do a drama reel and a comedy reel. If you're just doing bare bones and you need 30 seconds, you can do something that is a little lighter, that has a little bit of drama in it and a little bit of comedy. You can combine those together. But what you wanna find is something that is very clearly something that you would play. So for example, for me, I have, a lot of times I get called in for you know, the young mother or the victim, all those great roles um, that are more dramatic. I'm actually very funny <laughs> in real life, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> so you wanna think, okay, if this is what people are seeing me as because I am strategically building my career, I need to have this on tape so they can see it, they can put me in that, and they can cast me in it right away. When you are picking your material, you are going to watch TV, which is really fun. So watch shows and find scenes that really work. What you're gonna be looking for in the scenes, you're not gonna be looking for the one-line roles, which we call the co-star roles. Instead, you're gonna be looking for the guest star roles, which are not the lead people in the, the drama or the sitcom. You're gonna be looking for the people that are coming in for the day and they're sort of featured in that show for the day. Because those people have meteor lines that you're gonna to want to take for your reel. Remember, the reel is about you, so you want to make sure that you have something to say. Good shows to watch for drama would be shows like CSI or you know, any of those kind of procedural cop kind of shows, Law and Order, all of that stuff, because they have good characters that you can put on your reel, and they, they fit very well with type. They're very type-oriented shows. Go to the older ones, because if you're gonna do what Camille's getting to, which is to basically copy the scenes that you're seeing, and somebody watches CSI, you don't wanna take a scene from last week's CSI. No. Get one from eight years ago. When you take the materials, so you're gonna actually take the scene, write the scene down, transcribe it. You can change some of the words. If the scene is about a mother whose child is missing, you could change it around a little bit and make it your know, husband make it your husband missing. or your brother or just, you know, slightly different. So the scene is kind of the same, but kind of 
not the same. And I think it's important to remember too, as you're doing your research and watching TV, you're gonna start seeing how similar most TV shows are. They, they really are in a format and they fit in a format. So if you're switching one word or two words and it's still very close to the genre, no one is gonna know the difference between what you're saying, what your reel is, is saying and what's actually in the actual TV show. Along those same lines, you probably don't wanna be looking at film for your reel. Uh, because film is just more memorable. It's something that, you know, one actor has really created the role for. So unless it's a really obscure film that is really fun and kind of off, you know, off the beaten path, you want to stick to something that's a little bit more general like TV and shows that are happening a lot, not like Game of Thrones or just sort of these really big kind of cult kind of classic shows that people just are watching every single weekend. So I think it's just important to say, are we telling you to plagiarize? Yeah, we kind of are, <laughs> um, but it's okay. And it's not like Camille's saying, you don't have to copy the scene exactly. Mm -hmm. You can, and, and the reason that we suggest this, and this is all about putting together material for your reel, um, is because most of us are not writers. We're not TV writers. So this is a good way to get some good material that feels like TV material. Um, but not to have to be a professional writer, unless you are a great writer or you know a great yeah. writer or you're in a you know conservatory program where there are students that are studying screenwriting, even better, go have somebody write yeah. something for you that's perfectly catered to your type. So a couple more options in terms of putting together a reel. One is kind of the classic option, which is student films. And this is one that people have been doing for years, um, which is you just go to the closest university that has a good film department, um, and you put yourself on their boards in terms of you know making yourself available as an actor. Two things to think about when you're doing student films. Number one, only accept a role if it's really a role that you could play today. If you're 32 and they need you to play a 72 year old and put a wig and makeup and all of that kind of stuff on you to convey a much older person, that's not really gonna help you on your reel. So do that if you want for your artistic growth or experience, but that's not really real material. The second thing that's really important when you're potentially doing a student film is make sure from the beginning that the student film director's intention is to give you the material when he or she is done editing. This is a big thing that you hear actors talk about. Oh, I've done four student films, but I can't get any of the material. And I think sometimes what happens is sometimes they just might not finish it. And in that case, I guess, you know, there's not much you can do about that. But sometimes they might be submitting it to festivals, well, for whatever reason, they want to keep it private. And that is not conducive to what you're trying to do, which is to build material for your reel. So be very upfront when you first meet with the person and you're accepting the role and say, you know, I'm so excited to do this. I love your project. I'm excited for the experience, but I also want to be clear about I'm doing this because I need the material for my reel. The last way to put together a reel yourself, and the cheapest way to do it, if you are a do-it-yourself kind of person, is iMovie. So again, if you have a friend who's really good with a camera and can shoot you a scene, and remember, you only need about 30 seconds, and you learn how to edit it yourself, and you can do it in a way that really looks professional, iMovie can look great. So that's, that's absolutely an option when first starting out. Just remember though, in the world of doing things yourself, sometimes doing things yourself ends up costing you more money. I can tell you from examples of headshots, yeah. I, I spent years trying to save money getting the perfect headshot, but going to all different people who were $100, $200, $150, and probably spent, you know, $3,000 over the years. Whereas if I had maybe just gone to the, the really good people that were $800 in the beginning, I would have had headshots that would have lasted me, you know, three or four years. So the same can be said for the real. Again, love the do-it-yourself attitude. It's great. And if you can do that and you come up with something really good, but don't waste a lot of time, money, and energy trying to create that when maybe you'll end up saving money paying somebody to do it for you. So we're gonna wrap it up with some do's and don'ts. Do make sure you have a reel, 
even if it's only 30 seconds long. Don't put low quality material on your reel. Do keep your reel short using only material that shows you off. Don't put theater scenes on your reel. Don't put extra work on your reel. Do use mostly close-ups of yourself. Don't try to tell a story, just showcase your acting ability. Do research real company sites before making your reel. Don't have a montage on your reel. Do watch TV with popcorn to better understand your type. Don't feel pressure to get more material than you actually need on your reel. Do make sure that you vibe with and like the people you hire to shoot your reel. Don't feel like you have to have a perfect reel with a ton of perfect material at the beginning of your career. Do remember that you are the boss of your reel shoot. And do trust that even though this might sound overwhelming, you can do it. So we threw a lot of material at you about making your reel. If there's anything that you wanna talk about further, you can join our membership. Or if you already have a bunch of material and you wanna talk about how to assemble it, how to best put it together, what's good, what's maybe not as good, we are here for you. We are happy to talk to you. We are happy to help guide you as you make the perfect reel. Just remember, you can do it. You deserve to be here and just ask yourself, why not you? Yeah. Why not you?